It's possible to cast miniatures with hot glue, but can you cast miniatures with white glue? After the relative success of hot glue casting, I had another crazy thought and began wondering if white glue could serve a similar purpose and get results that are decent enough for terrain. So at random points throughout the past year, I've been testing that exact thing. To make things easy, I'm using the same hot glue molds as in my hot glue casting video, because I don't have any silicone on hand at the moment. One important distinction here is that with the white glue I'm using either no oil, or whatever residual oil remains in the molds after months of not being used. The first thing that I tried was a dollop of white glue in a mold that I made from some Mega Bloks coins. You can see how it sunk down and created a cavity after drying some. I put more glue in it the next day, waited a day, and at this point I thought that it would be dry and attempted to free it from the mold, but it was obviously still too wet inside and so I was just mushing the glue around. Then after another couple days I could tell that it's done by this massive hollow spot on the bottom. I popped it out and I was left with an exact replica of the original Mega Bloks coins. I didn't like how thin it was though, so I put it back in the mold again and its shape changed slightly afterwards. My other test pieces were a skull despite how many Citadel skulls I have left, and the corner of the Hero Quest tomb. I used my plastic cutters to remove the excess glue, and this is surprisingly solid when dry and causes a similar snap as cutting plastic. I used cheap acrylic black paint on these pieces, and I was impressed at how well the paint stuck without causing the dry glue to become wet again. The coins I painted up, cut in half to shorten it, which revealed the hollow pocket of air inside, and then used it on this random piece of Dwarven scatter terrain that I made. My next experiment was an orc head. I did this the same as the other pieces by filling up the mold all the way. Because of this, to properly catch the detail, I had to take it in and out of the mold quite often. Here, the head looks like a blob with horns. I put it back into the mold again, filled up the spaces with fresh glue, and took it out after several more days. I was left with this thing that more closely resembles an orc head than before. There were still several glaring issues with the end result, so I mounted it on a piece of bamboo skewer and turned it into an orc head on a stick that's similar to the Lord of the Flies one that I made in 2019. You can see how there's this massive split in the head, although the horns look fantastic, especially considering that the hot glue version didn't even have horns. Speaking of it, here's a hot glue orc head compared to the white glue one. After these tests, I developed a more proper method that created better results. To demonstrate this, I'm using a mold made from a Megblox orc shield. I put down a thin layer of glue, then let it dry for several days. I could tell that it was pretty much dry because the glue turned transparent. Then I repeated this process three or four more times to get the depth that I wanted. After a good week or so of total drying time, I was able to remove it from the mold easily without any issues. It's preserved a good amount of the detail and looks pretty close to the original plastic shield. At this point, it was still somewhat flexible and needed to dry more before painting. After drying some more, it became so hard that it creates a sound if tapped. Using the same method as before, I took another several days to test what a skeleton head with several spikes would look like. Hot glue didn't work for this mold, but maybe white glue would look better. Here is the original skull with the re-glued horns, and this is the end result with white glue and black paint so you can see it better. The white glue picked up more of the horns than the hot glue, but they still aren't full. It does have the bottom straps of the helmet at least. The other problem with this is that it still hasn't properly picked up the face detail, and looks nearly identical to the bad hot glue one that I stuffed into a gelatinous cube. This makes me wonder if my issue is the mold for this one, but I'm not risking breaking the horns on the plastic head again to test that. These pieces did all paint up really nicely, though I didn't put much effort into it. Here's the tomb corner, the skull, and the skeleton head and the helmet without a shade applied to it. Yes, these do actually work for train, and here's the skull as part of this graveyard angel statue that I made. And of course I had to test if this works with the full Hero Quest tomb as well. This took a little more than a week in total, but it was well worth it and came out surprisingly good looking considering it's made from glue. You can even see details like the eyebrows on the face. As I was getting it out of the mold, there was a nice snapping sound from the separation of the hot glue and the white glue. That hole on the underside was where I kept having to insert more glue because an air pocket was created there. This tomb is very peculiar because it's hard and flexible at the same time, and I think the slight bend was caused from it drying faster on the edges than the inside. It has decent enough detail and even captured an air bubble that was caused by casting the hot glue mold. Here it is compared to the hot glue version, and it's really close but of course isn't perfect. Now it's time to discuss the pros and cons of white glue casting. Firstly, the pros. White glue is ridiculously cheap. You can get a bottle for 3 or $4 dollars, and there's a lot of glue in each bottle. Using the same molds as hot glue casting means that you don't have to risk ruining your miniatures again, trying to encase them in hot glue. The drying process can be sped up by leaving the pieces to dry in the sun. Even during the winter, I put them on my windowsill for this exact reason. 
Because the white glue castings are hard after fully drying, I almost think that it's a better material for creating full miniatures with several parts than the much more squishy and flexible hot glue. White glue may be better than hot glue at preserving details, just because it's a slow drying liquid compared to a fast drying thermoplastic. Just take a look at this orc helmet, where you can clearly see underneath the thick paint that this rivet was preserved in the casting. And just like with hot glue casting, these white glue pieces can be used for painting practice, spare parts, and are also perfect for terrain without consuming your good bits. And now the cons. Some parts can be left thin and brittle if air pockets happen to form there. The hands on this tomb are thin and squishable because of this, and it's why I put the coins back into the mold for more glue the second time around. There's a possibility to break the molds, and you can see here how the orc head one now has a tiny hole in it. That might have been from taking the head in and out multiple times before discovering the proper method, but it's still something to be cautious of. You cannot use this with two-part molds, or at least not the type that I made for the ribcage where pressure must be applied for it to stick together properly. This isn't an issue for hot glue because it dries so fast, but white glue doesn't have the same property. Each piece takes a long time to create and drying times only increased if you live in a humid area. This makes it not useful for if you're in a rush and need a quick duplicated arm or something because you lost one. Another risk due to the long drying time is that one layer might not fully dry before you add the next, causing that first layer to never fully dry and possibly ruining the whole casting. Despite doing better than hot glue with horns, it's still not perfect at getting small details. The way that the mold is oriented determines where the glue fills in details, since it's a liquid. The example of this is the skull with three spikes on it where only one was filled in. I have doubts that this method would work for a full miniature, due to similar limitations as hot glue casting. And this is the strangest negative thing but also makes sense. White glue castings seem to end up a little smaller than the original plastic piece. The elf in the tube is a good amount shorter than the original one. When it's pulled out of the mold, there's still some moisture, but after sitting exposed to air for weeks, it dries out fully and shrinks. This is likely what makes white glue not useful for duplicating anything beyond body parts and debris for scattered terrain. Despite its challenges and complications, white glue casting is still an interesting concept that may have a unique purpose in the future that hasn't yet been discovered. Or maybe it's just some weird concept that I wanted to explore for fun. Thank you everyone so much for watching this video. If you liked it, please do give me a like and a sub because that really helps me out. And I will see you all in my next video. Goodbye.